Hey guys, welcome back to the Kubernetes series. If you are following this series, I am sure that many kube cluster is up and running in your mission. If it's not, please go ahead and set up the Kubernetes by referring to the Kubernetes setup chapter of this series. In this chapter, we will be discussing everything you need to know about pods by deploying Nginx to Kubernetes. So without any further delay, let's get started. Do you know what a pod is in general? Or do you know what a P is? I'm sure you know it. The shell around the P seeds is called a pod. So a pod is something like a shell or case around a group of similar things. We can compare our Kubernetes pods to this. The P seeds can be compared to containers. And the P pod can be compared to our Kubernetes pod. So the Kubernetes pod is an encapsulated layer for our containers. A pod can have one or more containers. So when we want to run our application, we will run it in the containers just like we did it in Docker. But in Kubernetes, the container alone cannot be deployed and it needs to be wrapped up in a pod. You might be wondering why we need this extra layer of pod when our application runs in a container. In most cases, each pod will be having only one container. Let us see a use case where we need multiple containers. Let's say our application is running in a container and it is getting configuration from a shared volume. And we want to update the configuration in the volume for every one hour by pulling it from GitHub. We can hand over the refresh part to a separate container without disturbing the main container. This refresh service will pull the configuration from the GitHub for every one hour and updates the volume. Often this helping container is called a sidecar container. We can compare this sidecar container to the extra carrier of the bike. So how do we manage these two containers if there is no pod? If there is no pod, these two containers may get deployed to different nodes. So we must make sure all related containers grow onto the same node when we have multiple nodes in our cluster. And we need to create networks manually to establish communication between these containers. And when we delete our main container, we need to delete the helper container manually to save the resources. And when we create it back, we should add the helper container too. With pods, everything is taken care of. All the containers in the pod will share the same network and storage. When a pod is deleted, all the containers in the pod gets deleted. And when the pod is created, all the containers in the pod will be created. So a pod is a group of one or more containers with shared storage and network resources. If we want to scale our application, that is, when the load increases, if we want to increase the number of instances of our application, we shouldn't increase the number of containers in the same pod. But we should increase the number of pods. When pods are created, each pod is assigned a unique IP address and range of ports. With this, we can run two applications on the same port in the same node. In fact, this is another advantage of having ports. Every container in a pod shares the network space including the IP address and network ports. Inside a pod, the containers that belong to the same pod can communicate with each other using local host. This is because they are in the same network. Containers that want to interact with a container running in a different pod can use IP address to communicate. Now let us see how to create a pod. Let's go back to the terminal and interact with the Kubernetes cluster with kubectl. If you remember, kubectl is the CLI to talk to Kubernetes cluster. Now let us try to create a pod by running nginx image in a container. A pod can be created with kubectl run and the pod name. So let me give nginx pod. Now we must specify the image from which the container has to be created. The image can be given with hyphen hyphen image is equal to image name which is nginx. If we don't give any tag by default it will take latest tag. So let's try to run this. As you can see, the pod is created with the name nginx pod. We can see the list of pods with kubectl get pods. 
as you can see the pod is created and its status is container creative meaning the container is getting created the pod is not yet ready let's try to run the same command to see if the pod is ready as you can see the pod is now running so creating a pod is that simple but in general we will be creating multiple objects like this pod so it's difficult to remember and maintain all these commands so instead of creating the kubernetes resources with kubectl commands if we can create with some config files it will be easy to create and maintain these resources kubernetes config files can be written in json or yaml files we will go with yaml as it's simple and more human readable i have made a detailed video on yaml please go through it to understand how to write yaml files so let's create a yaml file for the pod template so now we are on the vs code and i'm going to create a file with the name nginx iphone pod.yaml the file name can be anything it doesn't really matter so let's enter in every kubernetes config file these four attributes are mandatory api version kind metadata and spec let us try to understand what those are api version is the version of the kubernetes api to create an object it varies from resource to resource for pods it's v1 we can check the api version with kubectl api iphone resources this is going to list down all the resource types that are supported as we need about pods let's filter that with grep pods as you can see this command has given all the resource types that contain pods and as you can see this is the api version let's go back to vs code and see what is the next attribute kind is the type of object in this case it's pod with the same command that we ran previously we can get to know the kind as you can see the last column is the kind of the object if we don't use grep the column names will be displayed at the top to distinguish what are these values next attribute is the metadata metadata is the information about the object like resource name labels etc name and the pod name so it's nginx iphone pod 1 and we can give the labels with labels dictionary so under this attribute we are going to give all the labels example team is integrations and app is to do like this we can give any number of labels these labels act like identifiers to the pod for example, if we have many pods and we want to filter by some labels, this comes in handy. Spec is the actual specification of the resource. Attributes for the spec vary from object to object. For example, for the pod, we should mention the list of containers that should go into the pod. So, containers. As we discussed, a pod can have multiple containers. So obviously this is gonna be array. We can define the array elements with iPhone. So this is the first element of the array. And in this array, we should mention the attributes like container name and from which image the container should get created and on which port the application should run, etc. So let's give the container name as nginx container and the image should be nginx latest if you don't provide this latest tag by default this is gonna take latest as we discussed in the docker series and next one is the ports so we are going to run this nginx on the 80 port so 80 so this container port is the port where the application inside the container runs. If we need to add a sidecar container to this pod, all we need to do is giving the container information as an another element in this array. For simplicity, let's go ahead with single container for now. Cool. Now we have the simplest Kubernetes config file that can create an Nginx pod. 
So to create the pod out of this config file, we should pass this config to the cluster with kubectl. We can do that with kubectl apply hyphen f. With this flag, we will be giving the file name where we specified our configuration, which is nginx pod.yaml. Let's hit enter. As you can see, a pod with nginx pod1 is created. Pardon me for the typo where I missed the i in the nginx. Let's verify the pods with kubectl get pods. As you can see, now we have two pods running. One we created with kubectl run, another one with ml file. Let's go ahead and fix this typo and see what happens. nginx iPhone pod 1. So let's clear the screen and apply this. kubectl apply iPhone f nginx iPhone pod.yaml. As you can see, another pod is created. Let's verify that with kubectl get pods. Now we have three pods. As this pod was created by the mistake of typo, let's try to delete that pod. We can delete the pod with kubectl delete pod and the pod name nginx iphone pod1. Let's delete it. Cool, the pod is deleted. Let's verify that with kubectl get pods. Now we have only two pods. If you remember, we discussed that we can filter the pods with the labels. Let's try to do that. kubectl get pods and iPhone yell and here we are going to give the label. Example here, team as integrations. Let's hit enter. As you can see, we have only one pod. But the first pod that we created with kubectl run, we didn't give any labels. That's the reason it didn't list here. So this is the advantage of labels. With labels, we can filter the pods. If you want to filter by multiple labels, all you need to do is add a comma and app is equal to to do. There you go, we got our pod. If you observe the output here, this is the name of the pod. And if you see this one, the second part is the number of containers in the pod and the first pod is the number of containers that are running. And the status of the pod is running and the zero indicates that the pod never restarted. If Kubernetes sees any issues while starting the pod, it will automatically try to restart the pod. This pod is created 2 minutes 49 seconds back. If you want to see more information about pod, all we need to do is kubectl get pod nginx iphone pod1 iphone o white. So iphone o indicates the output format. As you can see, the more information about the pod is printed like IP address of the pod and the node on which the pod is created. As you can see, this is our worker node. We can also get the pod information in the YAML format. YAML. This is the information about the pod in the YAML format. This is the IP address and the status is running and this is the image that we use to create the container, etc. You can go through this YAML for better understanding of the pod. And if you want to get the detailed information about the pod, you can use the kubectl describe pod and pod name, nginx iphone pod1. So this is going to give the information about a single pod. kubectl get is used to get the information about multiple pods, whereas kubectl describe is used to get detailed information about a single pod. Let's hit enter. The detailed description of the pod, image and the port on which it's running and the status and also you can find the events here. Like initially the pod is assigned to the worker node and later it was trying to pull this image and successfully pull the image and later it created the container and finally it started the container. So when you face any issues while starting the pod, you can actually look at this history and debug why your pod is not getting started. You remember, in the Docker series, we entered into the container and we have seen how it looks like. In the same way, we can get into the pod with 
tube CTL, exec, iPhone IT, iPhone IT meaning interactive terminal, and the pod name and iPhone iPhone dash. Enter. Now we are in the pod. So let's do ls. These are all the files available in the container. So let's come out of the pod. When we have multiple containers in the pod, we can specify to which container we want to get into with iPhone C. iPhone C Nginx container. There you go. We are in the Nginx container. When there is a single container, automatically it will get into that single container. Let's come out. Well, we deployed our application to Kubernetes, but how to access it? We cannot access pod directly from outside of the node. It can be accessed only from within the node. We will look at how to access the pod from outside in later chapters. But if we have access to the cluster, we can access it with port forward. So, kubectl port forward and pod name and local port to the container port so what we are trying to do here is we are listening on 8083 port of the local machine and forwarding it to the 80 port of the container of this pod and in this pod nginx is running on the port 80 let's hit enter as you can see it is forwarding from 8083 to 80 so let's go to the browser and try to access localhost 8083 there you go we are able to access nginx which is running inside our pod if we stop this port forwarding this will not work anymore so this port forwarding is useful while debugging and we can check our application logs with kubectl logs pod name as you can see these are the logs of our nginx and finally we can delete all the resources that are present in the yaml file with kubectl delete iphone f nginx iphone pod dot yaml apply is used to create or update the resources whereas delete will create all the resources defined in the yaml file and enter as you can see nginx iphone pod 1 is deleted so kubectl get pods as you can see now we have only one pod which we created with kubectl run you can delete this pod also with kubectl delete nginx iphone pod i'm sorry the error is saying that it doesn't have a resource type called nginx iphone pod so when you use kubectl delete you should specify the resource type so kubectl delete pod nginx iphone pod it got deleted we can verify that with kubectl get pods or just pivo pivo is the short name for the pods we can get the short names of all resources with kubectl api resources grip pods and this is the short name for the pods and psp is the short name for pod security policies etc so you can use either pods or just pivo that's all about pods there are few more commands that we can operate against the pods and we will be discussing about those commands in the later chapters as we move on. I am sure that now you know everything about pods. Stay tuned for other Kubernetes objects. My name is Pavan Iltapu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.